I really enjoy this time of year because it always challenges me in physical ways, emotional ways, spiritual ways, and quite frankly, every possible way you can imagine. I'm always broke at this time of year. I'm always alone at this time of year. It seems as though this time of year, while everyone is enjoying the holidays, I'm always doing something different and then trying to be or share with people that experience the same thing that I go through at these holidays. Because while I enjoy them, I mean, I like Christmas. I see very much a wonderful time of year regardless of whether it's Santa Claus or Rudolph sitting around watching cartoons or watching a night movie or a, a presentation of a cantata or going to a midnight mass at some Catholic or some Byzantine or some Roman Catholic or Greek Orthodox Church or whether it be in a fundamentalist kind of way where you kind of see all the modern presentations that they have and the abilities to put together all these programs, you know, and put out these wonderful, marvelous scenes. Or even times when I've noticed that, you know, in the countryside where there have been little city presentations of nativities, you know, or sometimes just walking along at night, you know, or walking with my wife, you know, before she's leaving, <laughs> yet she's leaving for Christmas. But walking along and seeing the houses lit up, you know, and I remember in Jerusalem that, uh, when I was there for uh, one Christmas back at the turn of the century, 2000, that it was wonderful to see the Hanukkah, Hanukkah, you know, and I know now I'm told that even more so the old city has really lit up, you know, and has really developed even more a lot of their celebrations of Hanukkah. This year being that it's on top of each other, Christmas and Hanukkah, I can't imagine what it'd be like around Bethlehem and all those other areas that are going to be very touristy. But for me, in my biorhythms, if you want to call it that, my Akkadian cycles, anything that you want to kind of make science apply to the physical realities of my physiology being down, I always find this time of year just being tired, being less capable to do everything that I try to do. Because <laughs> believe me, there's there's a bunch of things that, man, I people just tend to like me to get involved in it because, you know, when I bring the enthusiasm or the energy or the motivation that I usually have into a project, it'll get done. Because <laughs> I'm whole hog or nothing. It's everything I got and all that I am, you know, and everything that I've ever been about. And, I think God honors that and likes that because today, as I was reading my devotionals and I was preparing for the day to read it and to meet it and to see what it is that God has in store for me to be about the business that God has given me even the ministry stuff that God allows me to participate with him in, even sharing with you and talking to you about all the things that I go through and perhaps you reach the same conclusions on that I found <laughs> God telling me bluntly, relax, don't do it, be still, rest. And I know yesterday he did the same and in a lot of ways, I'm not surprised. and I'm very gratuitous or thankful that God would be so intimate with me that he would share with me his word and make me, because I do honor him, to back off what I'm doing, to take the time to rest, relax, restore, maybe take some opportunities to re-examine some of the things that I'm doing and to evaluate them and to plan for them. Although today it wasn't more like he wanted me to go out there and start you know, doing the sneaky things I tried to get away with yesterday. I'm doing stuff still. Today it was more like, don't do anything. <laughs> but you know, I like that about having a personal relationship with God, even like you have. Because he knows me 
He'd be better than I know me, but he knows me so well that I'm dumbfounded by some of the cleverness of my own sinful flesh and how I try to do things anyways. And God still somehow comes through, you know, and and, and shows me, you know, how I I really try to you know, get away with it, even like a little kid. And because of his grace and mercy that he's he's applied in my life, I really I really like that, you know. I kind of get a thrill out of, out of seeing him kind of bust me at times, you know, with the little things and sometimes the big things too, but he never takes the time to tell me that I'm so wrong that I can't be forgiven. But rather, I kind of get a thrill out of the idea that he's so personally and intimately involved in my life that he wants the best for me. And sometimes the best means backing off of what I'm doing. So I wanted to record this devotional. For some of you out there that maybe Happy Hanukkah isn't such a happy thing. Maybe the season of our joy is not the season of lights for you. Maybe it is a time of being down and not so well rested or even so full of joy. But take the time for yourself to always recognize that it's okay to not be the life of the party. There's nothing wrong with being less than happy. There's nothing that says you have to always be full of joy, but that you can have sometimes in the midst of depression or sorrow or sadness, you can have peace, that fruit of the spirit that passes all understanding, a peace that is beyond definition, a peace that God really gave to us in the form of his son when he was born at this time of year because we would be able to eventually find that peace when Jesus finally died and rose again and then sent his spirit so that we could know peace. You see, there's a common Jewish expression that says, Shalom Aleichem, and it's a Orthodox way or it's a Biblical Old Testament way of saying, peace be unto you. In other words, it's like a proclamation of saying, we want for you to have peace, or I want you to have peace. And the word is Shalom Aleichem. It also can mean that in the old Middle Eastern way of saying it, has peace found you this day, my brother? And have you been maintaining yourself in that peace? For there's a communicative idea of peace that is often expressed in colloquialisms that we don't see sometimes in modern theology or we see in supposed Hebraic idealisms, but rather it is communicative in the old folks that you sit around and talk with them, whether it be in the Bedouin or in the Middle East or in some of the ancient cultures that are still exercising some of the old traditions of even the idea of that your enemy is welcome to be fed or be taken care of for up to three days. Hmm. wonder where that came from. But in all of this, when Shalom Aleichem was used, usually the response was Aleichem Shalom back. And unto you may there be peace, as you have given unto me that desire for peace to be existent. I likewise bestow upon you the same prayer that we would find peace, and between us may that exist. And in a lot of ways in the Islam, they say the same thing. They say, Assalamu Alaikum. And it's the same word, really, Shalom Aleichem, Assalamu Alaikum. And it's a different language somewhat, but it still communicates the same idea. Well, we don't have in America, you know, this whole idea of peace because America's always been about positive thinking or the power of this or the power of that or we got to do this and we got to do that. And we got to be, 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 go, go, go. Because ever since the industrialized revolution, we really haven't worked on anything except achievement rather than attaining peace. Jesus said, in the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I will overcome the world. My peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world gives, give I unto you. In that, my prayer for you, if your 
hyper this time of year and you're happy and you know it and you're just jumping around and bouncing and giggling and going for it and spending and contending for all the shopping lists and you know joys that there are at Christmas and, and all the holidays, then I hope you find also a time of peace that you may have a moment of quiet repose that God could get a word in edgewise, but also in all the other people that maybe aren't feeling so up. My blessing and prayer for you is that you would know peace on earth, God's will and good will toward men. For such is the kingdom of heaven, that it is about us and it is within us, but we attain to that through a spiritual dimension that God gives us by making us aware of it. And how he does that is by his spirit. And that spirit really is one of love towards you and love for you. Because God extended his love towards you when he gave his son, obviously. That's pretty, pretty blatant, well-known statement, you know, that God commended his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So it's obvious that God has for us love. But God loves you also so much that he wants for you to have today something beyond just the knowledge that you may be saved and that you can call out for salvation and be delivered from what we live in, this body of sin and this kind of mental aggravation of the world trying to influence us in several ways that we may not feel like right now this season, but that he also wants to give you one of the parts of love that you may not have thought of, something that is a part of his nature because we know that what God is, is God is love. So one aspect that I pray that God would reveal to you today and put into your life, into your soul, into your being right now in what you're experiencing is peace. May the peace of God rule your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. Because in Jesus, in the one who is anointed, as the word Christ means, which is Messiah, in that anointing that comes down from above, it goes inside you to cause a chain reaction to cause an interaction in your being of a spiritual dimension that comes up and begins to fill your soul with peace. As I rest and take my obedience to the Lord and don't do all that I want to do and chomping at the bit sometimes to do, I pray for myself that his peace would be upon me and would be within me and would flow out of me today. And likewise, I ask God that he would touch you in a special way, that you might know the peace of God that passes all of his heaven, that he might, in your day today, rule your heart and mind in Jesus.